Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. In this video, we'll take a look at the two sections of a database build that people often use a GUI for the software installation using the Oracle Universal Installer, or OUI, and the database creation using the Database Configuration Assistant, or DBCA. Using silent installation and configuration allows you to script builds, making your builds more reliable, repeatable, and quicker. I'm purposely going to keep this light. If you want a more complete example, check out my video of a Vagrant database build, which includes this same approach. We set up some environment variables, which we'll use in the installation commands. We capture the host name of the machine and define the Oracle base, Oracle home, inventory location, and the location and name of the installation media. As you can see, this is an Oracle Database 19C installation. We create the Oracle home directory, switch to that directory, then unzip the installation media. We are now ready to run the installation command. If we run the run installer command without any arguments, we would start the Oracle Universal Installer in GUI mode. Instead, we answer all the questions it would have asked us with a combination of a response file and some command line arguments. We're doing this installation on a small virtual machine and we know we're going to fail some of the prerequisite checks, so we use the ignore prereq flag to allow us to skip over them. The wait for completion flag stops the installation running in a different thread. In a scripted build, we don't want our script to move forward until the installation is complete. We say this is a silent installation. We use the default response file supplied with the installation media to answer many of the installation questions. We could edit the response file to provide all the answers, but I find that method clumsy. The response files are big and contain responses for lots of actions we don't care about. Instead, we'll reference the default file and fill in the gaps on the command line. The rest of the responses are self-explanatory if you've ever done an Oracle installation before. We ask for a software-only installation, tell it the host name, Unix group name for the file system, inventory location, language support, Oracle home, Oracle base. We do an enterprise edition installation, if you have division of labor between teams, you might want to use different groups here. We'll just set them all to DBA. Finally, we indicate we don't care about setting up a link to my Oracle support for software updates. When we run this, we get a warning about our environment not meeting the prerequisites. We knew this, so that's fine. After some time, the installer completes and we're prompted to run the root scripts as the root user. We log in as the root user and run each script as instructed. The software installation is now complete. Even though we've run these commands manually, we would normally include them in a build script. Now the software is installed, we can create a database using the Database Configuration Assistant. This follows a similar pattern to what we saw before. We set up some environment variables, which we'll use in the dbca command. Oracle SID, syspassword, pluggable database name and password, and the location we want the data files to be written to. If we ran the dbca command with no arguments, we'd run the database configuration assistant in GUI mode. Instead, we use the command line arguments to answer all the questions. We want it to run in silent mode. We want to create a database. We use a general purpose template. We set the global database name and SID to the same value. We are not using a response file. We set the character set, the sys and system passwords. We create a container database with a single pluggable database. This is a multi-purpose database. We define the memory management. We want to use regular file system storage and we tell the installer where to place the files. We define the redo log size. We don't want enterprise manager configuration to be done now. And finally, we ignore the prerequisite check failures. When we run this, it takes a little time to complete, so I've sped up the video. 
Eventually, we get the message to say the database has been created. Once again, we've run the commands manually, but we would normally expect to include them in a build script so the installation can be automated and all the build and configuration steps kept in source control. If you've never used these silent mode operations before, they can look a little daunting, but remember, all you're doing is answering the same questions you would in the GUI mode, but scripting them. Once you've run through this a couple of times, you'll never go back to using the GUI screens. If you're interested in checking out some more complex silent builds like Rack, DataGuard or Cloud Control, check out my Vagrant builds on GitHub. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.